Three weeks ago, it looked like the Utah Jazz were dead in the water. They just lost 4 of 5 to drop below. Five hundred in their first season without longtime offensive focal point Gordon Hayward, and they'd also just lost defensive linchpin Rudy Gobert to a right knee bone bruise that was expected to keep their best player out of the lineup for at least a month. How, exactly, would a Jazz team that had been nightmarish offensively early in the season, and seemed like it would have to depend primarily on a smothering defense to eke out wins, survive without its shot swatting star center. The answer, evidently, become one of the NBA's most explosive offensive teams. Duh. The Jazz annihilated the Washington Wizards on Monday night burying the visitors beneath a trio of first-half runs, a 10-0 spurt late in the first quarter, a 15-2 burst midway through the second, another 10-2 rush in the closing minutes of the second, that left the John Wall less was flat on their backs and staring up at the lights and a 34-point halftime deficit. Things would only get worse from there, as the Jazz poured it on after the break, repeatedly punting a very dead horse on their way, despite a fourth quarter that featured no points by any Utah starter, to a 47-point destruction that stands as the second-worst defeat in Washington franchise history. A lot of things have to happen to create a score this lopsided. The Wizards clearly did more than their fair share to earn the beatdown, as detailed well, and, one would imagine, painfully, by Adam Rubin at Truth About It. But as much as the final score tells us about the Wizards' defensive woes and struggles to consistently generate good looks with Wall on the mend, the gleeful and unrepentant stomping also points at just how viciously the Jazz have been exploiting opposing defenses over the past few weeks. Since November.22, nobody in the NBA has scored more efficiently or explosively than the Utah freaking Jazz. Not the streaking Cavs. Not the rampaging Rockets. Not the defending NBA champion Warriors. Utah's head and shoulders above them all, averaging a blistering 123.4 points per 100 possessions over that span, a full seven. Two points per 100 more than second place Cleveland, the distance between number one and no. Two is about the same as the distance between number two and number nine, the Milwaukee Bucks, at 108. Nine per 100. Utah's sharing the ball, leading the league by a mile in passes per game and secondary assists during this stretch, while trailing only the Warriors in nightly direct helpers. Quinn Snyder's club is also taking care of the Rock, leading the league in assist-to-turnover ratio and ranking second in turnover percentage, the share of team possessions on which a member of the Jazz coughs the ball up. I think that's the thing that's improved the most," said Gobert after making his return to the lineup on Monday, scoring four points with 10 rebounds, three assists, two blocks and a steal in 21 minutes of action, according to Kyle Algoon of the Salt Lake Tribune. That's the team we want to be. We want to be unselfish, and the team you don't know who is going to score.
A different Utah players are averaging at least 8 points per game during the red hot run. Eleven are shooting at least 45% from the field, nine are over 35% from three-point range. Utah is canning 46% of its long-distance looks as a team over the last six games, thanks in part to drive and kick, swing swing movement that's led to a host of open looks. of Utah's 32.3 nightly three-point looks have come with no defender within four feet of the shooter, according Second Spectrum's player tracking, an uptick over 26 of 28. Three before Gobert's injury. Four extra open or wide open threes a game can make a whole lot of difference in how wide those driving lanes are, how good a shooter the spot-up target is and how many points you ring out of every possession. According to jazz radio voice David Locke, Snyder calls the practice of getting into the paint off dribble penetration, collapsing the defense, kicking it out and swinging it to get new opportunities to attack the paint putting an opponent in the blender. Utah's been doing that with gusto, averaging a shade under 48 points per game in the paint during this winning streak, and notching 50 against Washington, despite lacking a dominant interior scorer by spreading the floor and giving some gifted guards a chance to get working downhill.